So that's, that's the point of that. You guys want to listen to the full reflection, watch the full thing, listen to the full thing, and uh, incorporate that into the reflection. I just want to make sure that you guys have that too. Make sure that you incorporate, uh, obviously, your recording of your track. Yeah, sure. Just, uh, just to get that in there. So that's great. Uh, let's give these guys their undivided attention here. Um, John is being a trooper today, so, you know, let's let him uh, do his thing up there. All right, guys. Introduce yourselves. Tell us what your subject areas are and uh, what the aim of your project is. And go through it with us. I'm John Mahaffey. I'm Zach Stone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's a social studies major. Or social studies as you can I'm entering education with concentration studies. <laughs> and I'm doing a biology secondary education. And um, we're doing really well in our um, subjects had a really good match. And uh, I had in my it's five, three, it's really impact on the biosphere. And he's got all kinds of stuff about how um, culture system effect and industry affect uh, the environmental development. So yeah, yeah. it's looking kind of perfect. Okay. So we're just gonna do a back and forth because we have like ten years apart of <laughs> hey, sorry to interrupt you guys are recording already? Yeah, or, it's okay, so we have to record so. Um so yeah, you basically saw the uh, description. Or John's is here. Okay. Yeah, this is a uh, are we good? <laughs> Pretty much just it's it's talking about how cultures impact and humans impact the development of the environments and how cultures can have uh, really adverse effects on the device here. And then uh, for, we're going to go ahead and go over our media. For my media, did it sound like one? Well, for my media, I did a voice thread. And it was actually kind of hard, but it's, it's, deal, it's, it's geared towards kindergartners. And so I have for each slide, I have um, my snowman guy is me. And that's asking a question about a picture that I have. And then I have an animal perspective that gives them some hints on maybe how to answer it. It's kind of open-ended. And then uh, there's an answer that plays after. So it's a super What a negative impact humans can have on the organisms around them. Can you tell what has happened here? What a seagull coming in. This makes me sad for my friend because we don't know the difference between litter and food. It's a place if they don't get it. This bird got the plastic caught around his feet. When we throw trash in the ocean, Animals like birds, turtles, and otters can get the plastic caught around their body parts or even choke them. So I have that, and then I have like polar bears and river pollutants, and just a couple more like recycling things dealing with that. So it's just each one is a teacher uh, question, a hint from the animal, like this one's a three eyed fish in the symptom. And then uh, I have an answer. What's the three eyed fish say? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll just <laughs> Sometimes factories pour radioactive chemicals into the rivers besides it. Name some ways that would affect the animals that live there. I used to have two eyes and now I have three. <laughs> That's just like a hint. Chemicals poured into rivers from factories can cause fishes to mutate, like the one seen here. But in worse situations, the chemicals can kill entire schools of fish in just a couple weeks at a time. So, yeah, that's the main idea for, for my uh, voice. So I thought I was, I don't know, it's a pretty fun way to do <coughs> a class to interact with it. Okay. And I did a frizzy for my, let's see, and uh, I felt that it had a lot of videos, it's actually just me watching my frizzy all the way. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of text. It's a, a lot of especially information based because I was working on an older age group. And I've never been this present before and I mean you can't see all that kind of Yeah. And um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of text based and uh, Can you post me if you go to more and then uh, go to the right uh, and then yeah, I'll, I'll take a look. Yeah. yeah. So um, it just goes over the different house of pollution mostly. To me, like, I don't know what's going to say. I couldn't get the text flow to work. I was like, oh, I can zoom in really far on one color. But, uh, yeah, it's, it just goes into a lot of pollution. It's, it's, it correlates with the seals. And uh, I actually kind of made this. It's the, the teacher didn't want to use steel images in their uh, questions. I can actually use this to, to step in. They can work by the way. I can just match this up with the questions that are in the work as well. So, 
That's where it's going to grow, man. Because you can see the most pollution is more than flushing. Side note, if you don't know what sound pollution is, look it up. It's like spray. Yeah, sound pollution, I had no idea how bad it was going. Certain, certain birds in cities are having to call louder to avoid uh, to be heard over top of uh, ambient noise. And it's causing a lot of like it's disrupting the ecosystems, and especially with whales and stuff in the ocean. Uh, boats and sonar mess them up so bad. Like, they can't hear their calls, and like, some, some pods die because they can't hear them. And when they first opened up SeaWorld, they had a, in the dolphin tanks, they had water filters, and they didn't really know too much about dolphins. So all of a sudden, every couple of weeks, they had dolphins dying off. And they figured out it was because the filters in the water were so loud, dolphins had incredible hearing, and so it was stressing them out to the point where they would die from stress. And so sound pollution is like as, like as real as like actual litter being thrown. So it's pretty cool thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're going to show you some activities we thought of. Yeah, uh, for mine, since it's an older range of students, I think we're going to do more of walking into it. So, the education base, one of the uh, big things you say. Uh, the third one that I've done in this is a little experiment, and uh, it shows like how um, like feathers and stuff on birds get affected by the wind. And you take some dish, put a little top and stick it that way, and like you examine the properties of it and how it insulates past that. And uh, like, oh, it's, it's really ruins, it doesn't work anymore. Like, and that, that's why it's so hard for the birds. So actually, it's actually almost worse for birds than other animals. Is in a lot. And um, the environmental cleanup was really nice. It's, I don't know how that work in some like really like, rougher areas, but um, they talk about how schools can get caught up with uh, environmental uh, veggie groups. And get a classroom out and just clear up an area. I've done that a lot. And uh, the tree planting, parallel with biology, you can design a, um, a uh, plant anatomy kind of thing with that. When you're planting it, you go over parts of the land and do that as you're planting the trees. So that was kind of what I did for that. And uh, the cool part about the activity is I actually was able to, like, in tree planting, I could have some of the same activities as John because it still works. I can still learn the same about the environment. And so, uh, Mine again is like for five year olds, so it's a little simpler. But one was a uh, plant and maintain like a class garden, like a long term, year long thing where each student has their own plant, but it's all part of a larger garden. <coughs> they not only have to work together to keep everything alive, but they learn how easy it is to actually plant something and have it grow. So maybe outside of school, that has a positive impact on them and how they look at things. Um, the class recycling bin, I had this in elementary school. And like, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. You have your class like paint, decorate the recycling bin. You have it at the front of the class, and you recycle. Everybody brings in their recyclables every week. And then at the end of the week, there's two kids that go bring it out to the dumpster. And you can only takes like two minutes. I always wanted like everybody wanted to be that kid, so it gets you like excited about recycling, especially at that age. Um, and then I have build a birdhouse, which is the same principle as plan to maintain a garden. You have to work to you, you, you can observe like life from the start to a year later, so it's a cool idea. Um, this was the more elaborate one. It's an airborne junk collector. It's a really simple thing. It's basically a piece of cardboard on a string with tape around it, but like reversible tape. And you stick it somewhere in the air where you are a lot, so like your bedroom or your kitchen, or there being one in the classroom too. And everybody in the class does one at their house and brings it in at the end of the week. And you can see all the dust particles on it and different things. So you can actually see what's in the air that you're breathing. So depending on how it looks at the end, you might be a little more concerned about your environment. And then uh, the compost pile, if anyone you've, you've ever done this in school, it's just you have a big contained area and the teacher starts off, like has a bunch of worms and then you just keep adding compost, like banana peel, orange peels, eggshells, coffee grinds, anything natural. And then the worms turn it into soil. And if you wanted to cross activities, you could use that soil in your class garden. So <laughs> just a little way to Time together. All right. All right. What is it? All right. I did a really 